God has a special plan and a purpose for us. We need to understand when we open the scriptures and read the scriptures, God speaks to us. God is going to show up. Unexpectedly, God is going to show up and be able to minister to you. My name is Shirley McLaurin. My name is Michelle. My name is Samantha. Hello and welcome to our Mosaic online service. The Lord is going to do a miracle in you and it is possible to see the light again. Please check us out on social media. We put together a great service for you. Creator put a system in place. The system that we call is called the prayer. Prayer is a privilege. Prayer changes things. God is anxiously waiting upon you to come. Today, 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 God is wanting to remember you. God sees what is in our hearts and minds. God sees the things that matters to Him. God sees the heart. Hello and welcome to our Mosaic Today service. My name is Shirley McLaurin and it is my privilege to welcome you all once again this weekend. We have family and friends watching this program from all over the world. We are very delighted that you are able to join us today. I trust this program will bring you hope, encouragement and blessings to you and your family. Please stay tuned and enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. temptations is there trouble anywhere we should never be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer can we find a friend so faithful who will all our souls share. Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of
you stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid, because I open seas your love never fails the chasm is far too wide I never thought I'd reach the other side but your love never fails you stay the same joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid, because I know that you love me. Your love never fails. things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. You make all things work together for my good. reading is taken from Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 to 9. If you have a Bible, please read along with me. Once again, that's Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. May the Lord add his blessing to this word. Hey, this is David McLaurin, and I'm glad you're able to join us today. If you're just tuning in, I want you to hang in there because I have a special word, a special promise to you from the Word of God. I just want you to hang in and uh, we love to connect with you. I'd like to express my sincere thanks for all of you. You've been writing to us, wishing us and uh, we, we, are, we are so honored that we're able to come into your home. Thank you for letting us in and uh, we look forward to ministering to you this whole year, the full year, 2021. I'm sure how are you feeling and trust this. You guys had a great holidays and I'm sure many of you have been trying to work through this 2021, making plans, writing goals, 
and seeing what God has in store for us. And again, as we try to uh, continue to cheer for you, thank you for writing to us. Thank you for letting us know what's been happening. Uh, we are here to pray with you, pray for you and intercede on your behalf. And at the same time, please do take some time to, to go through our website. You may want to pass that link to your family and friends. And again, if you like this program or if we want you to put a check mark like this, subscribe this. If you're on YouTube or Facebook or any other social media channel. And again, we firmly believe that God's word transcends. God's word transcends all limitations, space and time. And we thank the Lord for this platform where we can able to come and to be able to see we are in the process of building a global family community of faith we are building a global family of faith and thank you again for choosing to partner with us and many have you been writing to express the need to partner with us we welcome your partnership because together we can do more because God is interested to partner God is interested to to work alongside with us and again uh, it is a joy to be able to see that we are all in this together and to move forward because God has a greater plans for us and especially uh, this year God has a special plan for you for your family for your kids and also as a whole family unit he wants us to do something unique he wants you to do something special this coming year and this year and I want you to have this expectation I want you to have this patience and I want you to 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 look forward to this because God is about to do something new and again that is my preface as we move forward with this year and many of you have been taking notes I have a habit here I want you to go grab a pen and a paper because I want you to take notes if you are able to take notes and the chances are you're able to retain this information for a long time my desire for you is that you take notes and again to see how God is going to speak to us minister to us so that we can be able to refresh to renewed and to be able to see how we can able to run the race that God has called us again uh, please note that uh, Christian walk is not a solo walk. You're not called to run on your own. You're called to run together. We are all called to run as a family. We are called to run as a community. We are called to run as a mosaic team. Thank you for choosing to partnering with us because we are here every weekend. Every weekend we want you to cheer for you, uh, empower you and to be able to achieve what God has in store for you. And I trust that you had a great Christmas holidays. I'm sure you a lot of good food. I'm sure you received a lot of presents. I'm sure you have uh, visited family and friends. But I understand we are still going through this Corona-19 or, or um, uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic as we all go through this. And I'm sure I wanted to remind you for based on the scriptures that God is sovereign, meaning God is still on his throne and he's still in control of everything and again the best is yet to come and as as we plan as we prepare as we get ready set go as we are going as we just started this new year i want you to get excited because i personally feel that 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 god is uh, doing something great something significant and we want you to get ready for that today i'm going to talk about four pillars to help build your new year i want to talk about four pillars if you choose to have hang out with me for the next hour we want I want to give you a bonus pillar a bonus principle a bonus tip I want you to grab all together five pillars to help build this new year I want to read a passage to you from the scriptures uh, the scriptures talks about Philippians uh, chapter 4 verse 4 I read rejoice in the Lord always I will say it again rejoice I want to say this to you. I'll read this passage again. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. I wanted to, to extend this class or I want to extend this, uh, this teaching time to focus our thoughts on four major building blocks or I would call them as pillars. And these pillars would help us to move forward. These pillars would help us to propel into the future because what God is about to do. One of the fascinations in my life, one of the fascinations in my life is to admire tall buildings, tall skyscrapers. They are awesome. 
I like the way they build. Especially if you were to ask me what I want to do in life, one of the things I always wish to do or to become in life was to become an architect. The architect has really come a long way uh, in this century, especially the last 50 years or so. And again, as I look through these tall buildings, as I look at these tall skyscrapers, it is fascinating. It is admirable to see these huge tall buildings. I might ask you uh, wherever you are, what city you are from or uh, watching this program. I want you to go to the downtown area, wherever you are, London, uh, um, New York, uh, Vancouver, uh, Dubai, um, Sydney, Australia, or maybe in Hyderabad or New Delhi. Uh, if in this big, big, huge cities, there are huge, big, big skyscrapers. I want you to go and just uh, stand and admire the way these Huge buildings were put together. Tall buildings have strong pillars. Tall buildings have solid foundations. The longer the building is, the taller the building is, the deeper the foundation goes. The deeper the foundation goes. And then on the foundation, there are some big, huge uh, uh, pillars that stand. And these pillars, I've learned that they're Form upright strong columns, strong pillars, upright columns to hold the structure on a foundation. If the foundation is solid, if the foundation is, is solid and the, the, the columns or the pillars are able to withhold, the withhold or be able to carry these huge structures in place. And that is what it is so fascinating for me to observe. These buildings stand firm because they are based on a solid foundation and they are based on the solid columns or the pillars. In the Old Testament, I want to take you to the passage. The God selected a man called Samson. And Samson was a strong man, a built, well-built man and God decided to showcase his power. God chose Samson. I want you to pause right in here. God chose Samson to be his showcase person. Please note that you did not choose God, but God chose you. God has taken the first step. God has taken the initiative towards you, to reaching out to you, to grab you, so that you can be able to become a channel where God could showcase his power, his wisdom, his strength, his knowledge, and, and the way we can able to express the, the presence of God in a very special way. Samson, God selected Samson as a judge and he was a very strong man, very strong man. Nobody could be able to withstand him because God had built him. God gave him the strength so that he could become a, a strong judge for the people of Israel. Unfortunately, in, in the last chapters of the scriptures, Bible reveals to us that he was repentant or he was coming back to his ten senses and he was in the temple of pagans. He was in a temple and he was asked to stand between a pillars. He was asked to stand between the two pillars. And here it is, the last phase of the Samson's life. Samson was against this huge temple in the temple and resting against these two pillars and in the last phase of his life he prays to God and Yahweh and he desperately asked God to give him strength one more time and God answers that prayer and gives him the strength and pushes those two columns pushes those two pillars the whole temple collapses the whole temple collapses. Here is my point. When you pray upon the Lord, when you pray to God in desperation, when you pray to God in intensity, when you pray to God expecting God to, to work through or to answer, He will certainly answer. Our God is not a God who takes great delight in hearing our prayers or listening to our prayers. He takes great delight in answering our prayers, in answering our prayers. And again, it is interesting because Samson prayed for the last time. The pillars came trembling down and everything fell apart and then Samson died within those temple debris. And again, it's a very tragic story. Here's my point. If we have the strong pillars on a solid foundation, 
the chances are no matter how big, how tall, how significant building that the construction that you want to build on is going to withstand. Today I want to give you four pillars. I want you to hang on to them. I want you to look at them. I want you to cherish them. I want you to take care of these four pillars. If you choose with me, choose to hang out with me for the next, uh, this, this teaching time, I'm going to give you another one. The first pillar I want to give you today is called the rejoice. The word rejoice starts with R, rejoice. Many people come to me and ask, David, what is God's plan for my life? What is God's plan for my life? It is interesting to note, God has already revealed the general will of God to all of us. God's general will applies to each one of us. All those who are watching this program, no matter wherever you're watching this, this God's general will appeals to you or applicable to you. And this general will appeals to us, to all humans on all continents. God's general will. David, you might ask, what is God's general will? The God's general will talks uh, something like this. You don't need to pray. You don't need to fast. You don't need to intercede. You don't need to spend time asking God, 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 what is your plan for my life? Because general will of God has been already revealed to us. What is the general will of God? The general will of God talks about love your God with all your heart. That is the God's general will of God. God has already said that to you. Make it very simple and clear. You don't need to pray and fast. Ask God, what is your general? Is this your will that I should love you or to pray for you? God has already revealed that to us. God's general will for our lives is that love your God with all your love, heart. And then it also talks about love your neighbor. Love your neighbor is another part of the general will. And pray without ceasing is another general will. God has already revealed to us, already has been said to us, that in the scriptures, that it is God's desire that, that we all pray on a regular basis. Pray without ceasing. Paul gives another exhortation to us especially in this new year and this new year the word I want you to hang on to I want you to grab this word is called the rejoice rejoice in the Lord always the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always many of you may be saying David how can I rejoice I've been having difficulty I've been having financial issues my health problems my my lot of things are not going well and again please note the text says do not rejoice in your situation do not rejoice in your troubled situation rather rejoice in the Lord rejoice in the Lord look up and rejoice in the Lord do not dwell do not dwell in your own situations but rather look up and rejoice in the Lord not rejoicing in your situation I recognize life happens to all of us life happens to us all of us in those times Paul is exhorting the Bible is reminding us today that we need to rejoice in the Lord at all times rejoice in the Lord always what do you want to rejoice about rejoicing in the Lord's name rejoicing in the nature of God rejoicing in the character of God rejoicing in the attributes of God rejoicing in the sovereignty of God rejoice in God's sovereign plan rejoice at Christmas time Psalm 37 verse 4 we would read delight yourself in the Lord and the Lord will give you and he will give you the desires of your heart let me repeat Psalm 37 verse 4 it says delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart what is your heart's desire today if I were to ask you what is your goal that you want to accomplish in 2021 what is that you wanted to see God to answer in 2021 if you have the great needs or expectations in 2021 what are your expectations and those desires will be fulfilled those desires will come to place come to take place in 2021 this and then again please note as we delight ourselves in the Lord and he will give you the desires of a heart and rejoicing in the Lord is like a command rejoicing in the Lord is like a command to all Christians even if you're not a Christian, there's a good principles you could learn. A rejoicing in the Lord, keeping up our eyes on the Lord would certainly make a difference. This is not an optional 
multiple choice. This is not a suggestion. This is not a recommendation. This is a command. Do you know what the importance of command meaning? When the Prime Minister or the, the President of the United States, when he issues an execute order, it becomes a command. People don't question. People don't argue. People don't counterattack. Rather, they just simply follow. A command is given to obey. God gives us a command in 2021 and your job and my job in 2021 is just to obey. God is providing for us. Why we need to rejoice in the Lord? Because your names are written in, in heaven. You're called to be the child of the living God. You are uh, God's potential is in us. And as we obey commands of God, as we seriously take the commands of God, we need to rejoicing in them because the names, your names have been given. Your names have been recorded in the scriptures. The first pillar is to rejoice as you live your life this year, as we all face 2021. Let us wrap ourselves around this one word called rejoice. Always be calm. Always be quiet. Always be stable. Always be smiling and rejoicing in the Lord because God is sovereign. God is sovereign. He understands what you're going through. He knows what you've been going through and he has the resources. He has the, the resources lined up so that they, you were able to be rescued. God is going to meet that need as we all tr travel this 2021 together. The first pillar I want you to focus, the first pillar I want you to concentrate, the first pillar I want you to pay attention is the word called rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, Paul says, again I say unto you, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord because God wanted to give his very best to us. We wanted to rejoice in the Lord because... God has given us a redemption. We want to rejoice in the Lord because of Christmas. We want to rejoice in the Lord because the Lord is coming back again for the second time. That is the second coming of Jesus. Rejoicing in the Lord. Delighting ourselves in the Lord. It certainly gives us an insight as we move forward. As we focus our thoughts. The God has spoken with his word. And he has reminded us with his word. And the word is that we need to rejoice. It is a commandment. It is a command. Are you willing to obey? Are you willing to pay attention? Are you willing to take seriously? When we take this word seriously, watch for this. Your life in 2021 will be will be modeling, will be adventurous, will be joy because the Lord is going to work out his very best purposes in your life. And just as you write this first word, the first pillar is the word rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord, Paul says, again I say to you, again I say to you, again I say to you, rejoice in the Lord. God is giving us this four principles, four pillars for us. We can hang on to, we can consecrate ourselves to be able to celebrate his life, celebrate his goodness in our lives, celebrate his faithfulness in our lives. The second word I wanna share with you this uh, today is the word called remember. First one is rejoice. The second word is remember, remember. What do you want us to remember? You might be uh, asking me. The Bible reminds us that God is the creator of our lives. He is the one who designed our, our bodies and lives. And the, the creator suggests that we need to remember a few things. What we want to remember? One of the wisest men who ever lived on this planet Earth is a man called by name Solomon. Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. And he gives this instruction. He gives this tip. And his tip is very interesting. It says, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. He says, remember your creator when you are young. Remember your creator when you are young. 
Imagine if we were to talk to, not uh, wise men, but sometimes I, I would say some names like uh, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Mukesh Ambani, Sir Richard Branson. People flock to him. Often people flock to him looking for an advice, looking for a tip, looking for a trick, looking for uh, a technique where, where they could give some insight where people can able to take notes and follow and apply that to our lives. The wisest man, the Bible says, Solomon gives this advice to all those who are listening today. If you were to recognize and remember the Creator, remember, remember your Creator when you're young. God promises a lot of things to his children. God gives us many things to us and God wants us to remember them. Don't forget but rather remember them. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 8, Genesis chapter chapter 12 verse 8, God came down from heaven. He spoke to a man called Abram and in that conversation God made a promise to Abram and after God left Abraham built an altar. Abraham built an altar and every time he would cross that path, every time he would cross that street, he could always look at that altar and say, this is where I met God. This is where God spoke to me. That was a reminder. That was the remembrance that Abraham had. Every time God would meet up, people built up an altar. Genesis chapter 35 verse 7. Here we see a man called Jacob. Jacob was fleeing his brother and he was on his way to a distant land. He falls asleep and gets in the middle of the night. He, he wakes up and he sees a big huge dream, a huge big ladder from heaven to the down and there were steps and then he saw angels ascending and descending, ascending and descending. And in the morning, what did Jacob do? He built an altar there and called it Bethel, meaning the house of God where he saw God appearing to Jacob. He built an altar and after that he he came back to that place, same place, same location. This time around he has children, he has wives, he had uh, livestock, all his servants as they were going through, walking through. He paused and looked at that altar and said, this is where the Lord spoke to me. This is where the Lord spoke to me and he answered me. And again, the point I want you to remember is, I want you to remember what God has done. What? God has done. It's interesting in our family we love to travel. I'm sure you all know we love to travel as a family. Sometimes my youngest daughter Michelle would comes up and say, Daddy, do you know three years ago where were we? In the Facebook column it says we were in Israel. In four years ago we were in India. We were in, in Toronto two Christmases ago. The Facebook keeps track of our travels and reminds us on the same day, reminds us on the same day, reminds us on the same day. The Bible is reminding us not to forget, but to remember, remember. My parents came to visit me in Canada a long time ago. And uh, when they came, they had a very first time experience. They never left India. And the first time they came to the United States and Canada, and then I took them to the KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'm sure you like, I like that KFC too. But again, it just so happened in Abbotsford area, I, I, I took my parents to KFC and we had a great luncheon, very great experience, great memory. We cherished, we ate good lunch, finger licking good chicken pieces, fries, gravy. And that happened only once. And then my mom and dad both are with the Lord, meaning they both passed away. Even today, the last week when I was driving with my family, I would always show that KFC to my children and said, I brought my mom and dad to this KFC. I did not forget. I remember. I remember the place. 
the memory it served, the memory it gave me, the God is reminding us the same thing to us. As we make memories, as God speaks to us, as God commands us, as God answers, He wants us to remember. Remember, we not only we remember about our Creator, we not only remember how God ministered to us, Scripture also teaches that God also remember us. God remembers about us. Psalm 103 verse 4, 14, he says, Psalm 103 verse 14, he says, the Lord remembers us, meaning you and I, God, the Lord remembers us that we are like dust. The Lord remembers us that we are like a flower, blooms in the morning, fades away at night. We are like a flower blooms in the morning and fades away at night. That's how the Lord remembers us. In the Old Testament, Hannah was praying for a baby, for a child. And the Bible clearly reminds it to us in the scriptures, the Lord remembered her. The Lord remembered her. And she was able to have a baby. Pray the Lord to remember you. Pray that the Lord to remember you. Remembering His goodness. Remembering His faithfulness. No matter what type of situation you would face, you always remember. You always remember His nature, His character, His attributes, His sovereignty, the way He has spoken to us in the scriptures. The first word I want to share with you is the word called rejoice in the Lord. Again, Paul says rejoice in the Lord. The second word I want to teach today is to remember. Remember. The third principle, the third word I want to give you today is called the word repent. Another R word starts with letter R, repent. We are all sinners, the Bible says, and God is holy. By his nature, by his character, he's perfect and he is holy in order for us to experience his fellowship. In order for us to experience his intimacy, we must deal sin on a regular basis. We must confess our sins and repent of our sins. Confess our sins and repent of our sins. And our, the Bible says all our sins will be forgiven. If we confess our sins to the Lord, he, he cleanses from all unrighteousness. In the Hollywood, there was this great man called Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood was a, a producer, a director, a, a great actor, a veteran actor, produced a movie called Unforgiven. He produced a movie called Unforgiven. People buy a $15 ticket, sit in a dark theater for three hours, watching that movie called Unforgiven. They walk away from that movie called Unforgiven. But if you are able to listen to me today, through Mosaic today, if you are watching this program, by the end of this program, you can walk away from this place forgiven, guaranteed, based on the scriptures, your sins will be forgiven. Today, the God is simple as that. There is no magic. There is no mantra. All we have to do is to confess our sins, meaning agreeing with God that we have messed up and confessing our sins and repenting of our sins to the Lord and inviting Jesus Christ into our lives and believe that he died for us on the cross and he came back to life on the third day and he promises, he promises an eternal life starts from today. Did you know that your sins will be forgiven? How do you know that? The Bible says so. You put the burden of proof on the scriptures. Thousands of people, thousands of years, many people came to disregard, to check out the legitimacy or the, the credibility of the scriptures. They all came and died. But the Bible still reigns because God spoke to us through the scriptures. God spoke to us through the scriptures. Based on the scriptures, if we were to repent on a regular basis, if we were to confess our sins on a regular basis, we experience God's intimacy. We experience God's fellowship on a regular basis. God's words this year as we move on, the first word is rejoice. 
second word is to remember the third word is to repent repent of all your sins it's like cleaning up your life cleaning up the mess the stuff that needs to go every weekend we get the garbage truck comes to our home to our community to the place that we what we do you know what we do we package all the garbage put together even put it outside and we wait for this garbage truck to come and pick up the garbage so that is all cleaned up as humans we sin by nature we need to regularly cleaning up our mess making sure that we are remain in right standing with Yahweh with God that was the third one and the fourth word I want to give you today is to remember if you're writing the fourth word you would write is called the renew renew the word the new year should be a time of new experiences the new year is a time to renew old commitments like family, marriage, kids, occupation, job, other commitments that you may have. <clears throat> Every year we renew our medical insurance. Every year we renew our health insurance. Every year I drive a car. Every year I renew my car license. Every year I renew my house insurance. We renew so that we keep the protection, so that we can keep the same coverage to us at all times. The Lord reminding us that it's about time. As we turn the page, we're no longer in 2020. We are in 2021. God is about to do a big significant thing in our lives and He wants us to renew our commitment to Him. He wants us to renew our uh, our, 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 our habits with Him. And if we choose to renew our devotion, renew our love, remove, re, renew our commitment, renew our, our faith, re, renew our prayer life, renew our scripture reading, renew our commitment to give gifts and offerings to the Lord because the Lord wished to partner with us. I want you calling you to renew Renew your commitment to your family. Renew your commitment to provide for your family. Renew your commitment to each other. Renew your commitment to pray. Renew your commitment to build your faith. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 we read, Those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Let me repeat, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 it says, Those who hope in the Lord those who wait upon the Lord, those who, um, those who wait upon the Lord, they will renew their hope. They will renew their strength. Do you want to renew your strength today? Do you want to renew your vision today? Do you want to renew your goals today? Do you want to renew your commitment today? Because the commitment comes when we wait upon the Lord. The strength comes when we renew. The vision comes when we renew. Optimism comes when we renew. Renew the word. You folks have been listening to me very carefully and patiently. The four pillars. Rejoice. Remember. Repent. And renew. And here is a bonus principle. Bonus tip for you this year. And this bonus tip is the word called rest. R-E-S-T, rest. The new year should be a time to rest. It is a time to rest. Knowing that God is our Father. Despite our shortcomings, despite our weaknesses, God still loves us. God still cares for us. God still provides for us. God who designed our bodies, He suggests that we rest. He suggests that we take time off. Some of us, we work around like uh, every day, work, hustle, run around all the time, doing all sort of things. And God is saying to you this year, whispering in your ear, it's time to slow down. Slow down. Slow down to reflect. Slow down to acknowledge. Slow down to sleep and leisure. Rest 
isn't mean the sign of weakness. Rest isn't a sign of laziness. Rather, when we rest, it's a sign of spiritual strength. You want to gain spiritual strength? Rest in the Lord. You want to spiritual optimism way to reach your goals for 2021 the key is resting upon the Lord resting upon the Lord when we rest it's a sign of spiritual strength rejuvenation and confidence you're looking for strength rejuvenation confidence in 2021 my recommendation is that you rest in the Lord, you relax in the Lord, you take it easy in the Lord because the Lord is in charge, the Lord is on the throne, He is ruling the universe. The Torah is a scripture for Jews and their Torah is based on the Ten Commandments. One of the commandments in the Old Testament is keep the Sabbath when you keep the Sabbath, meaning resting, taking it easy, resting, when you rest for a day, the Bible says you're honoring the Lord. If you want to honor the Lord, rest for a day. Rest for a day. My promise to you this year, as you chart your plans and courses for this new year, I want you to honor the Lord when you rest. When you obey, you're honoring the Lord. When you follow His words, you're honoring the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse, the first 15 verses are your words for you, words of promises for you. You can grab anything you want from there and personalize it and use it. As we face this, as we face this new year together, Let's implement the words that God has given to us. Let's get serious about these four words, the five words that I gave you today. First word is rejoicing. Re second word is remember. Third is repent, renew, and rest. If you incorporate these pillars into your life today, 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 I guarantee that 2021, will be a blessing to you, to your family, to your children, to your community, and to all of us here because God will be honored as you put all this together. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've been experiencing, but I do have this word for you from the Lord. God's word transcends time and space limitations and boundaries. Let me repeat, God's word transcends time, space, limitations, and boundaries, and He has the best interest for you. I wanted to pray for you. Father, I thank you, God, for today. Thank you, God, for reminding us once again that you're a God who cares about your children. Lord, as we come together, as we learn this spiritual truth, spiritual pillars that we apply into our lives, I pray that you would create the desire in our lives that we may fall in love with you again so that we can continue to serve you, continue to love you, continue to follow you, continue to honor you. Lord, many of us here are going through difficult times, challenging times, health-wise, relationship-wise, financially, whatever it may be, Lord. I pray that you would demonstrate once again that you're a good God and a faithful God this all year. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died.
then one day I'll cross the river I'll fight life's final war with pain And then as death gives way to First of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for tuning into our services week after week as we continue to dive deeper into God's Word and worship Him through song and prayer. We would love to connect with you, whether that's through email or any other way, we'd love to hear from you. Your prayer requests are important to us so that we can pray with you as you encourage us as well. Next, I'd like to invite you to partner with us with your gifts and offerings. All gifts and offerings are tax deductible. The link to submit those is displayed just below. And we thank you for your partnership. And finally, please check out our website and share it with your friends and family as the Lord continues to bless us each and every day. Until next time, stay safe and stay blessed. Thank you. Hey, this is David. I'm glad you're able to join us today as we wrap our service. We have a tradition here all the time. We wrap up with the Lord's Prayer and Benediction. If you are listening to this program, wherever you are, what languages, whatever languages that you speak, I invite you to please stand. If you're sitting on a couch, I invite you to please stand. If you're sitting on a floor, I invite you to please stand. If you're sitting on a chair, I invite you to please stand because we want to show our respect to Jesus Christ. Bow with me and repeat the Lord's Prayer in unison. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and to keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for choosing to tune into our program. We want to wish you a happy new year. And uh, we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Until then, may God's best be yours. And, and stay safe. Shalom and peace. This program is made possible by gifts from viewers like you. Thank you. Please check us out on social media. Check out our website and please share it with your family and friends. Thank you for choosing to tune in to our program. May God's best be yours. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.